So let's talk about variables in Golang. I've opened up my Go Playground window and it gives us some code by default. I'll get rid of this line inside the func main. And then I'll define a variable called i of type integer and value 97. So for integer, you just write int. In uh, languages like JavaScript, you may have noticed that you don't need to write uh, the type of the integer and the language is itself able to infer that. But in Golang, you have to specify the type. Also in languages like C, C sharp, you may have noticed that int uh, has to be written before uh, you write the name of the variable. But in Golang, it's the reverse actually. You have to write the type of the variable after the name of the variable. And then lastly, you have to write the value of the variable. Now there are multiple types in Golang. So this is one type, right? Then there is uh, a type called float. There are two types of floats. One is 32, um, which is uh, you know, used for working with 32-bit numbers. Float is any number which has some value after the decimal point. Then you have float 64, which is used for working with 64-bit numbers. Then you have strings, where you can define values of uh, letters and text, basically. So it's quite helpful. Then you have bool, which is basically boolean. So it has two values, true or false. And then you have an interesting uh, type, which is complex. So complex 128 with 128 bit. And to work with complex numbers, you have to use a package called CMPLX. So we'll have to import it out here. It's a part of the math package, CMPLX. Now the CMPLX package has a function called square root with a capital S, do remember that. And then you can define number here, minus five plus 12 I, which is, this is an imaginary number. <coughs> so these two uh, constitute a complex number. Now what we'll do is we'll try to output the values of all of these things. So if you have seen the previous video, you know that you have to use FMT because that has the function called print line that we need to print something onto the screen. So we'll print the value of i, j, k, and n, z, and w. Let's see what happens. So we get the value of all these things perfectly, right? So I'll get rid of all of this <coughs> and I'll also get rid of this package. I don't need it anymore. I'll show you another example now. You don't have to define the value of an integer, of a variable. You can just declare the variable and then later on you can define the value. So this is also a very common practice, right? Just declaring the variable and then defining the value. And then after that, you can also say i is equal to 27 and then let's see what happens. So fmt.println i and we should see the value 27 because it takes the latest value this gets overwritten. Now, let me show you another example. Just like we have defined, sorry, declared this uh, integer called i, let's declare more variables. So where f float 64, where b bool, where s string and fmt dot print ln. And because I want to see the values of these things, so I'll say percentage V, percentage V, percentage V, percentage Q, and new line, and I, F, B, and S. So let's see what we get here. It says print line call has possible format formatting directive percentage V. So it seems like I have made some kind of a mistake somewhere. Sorry, yeah. So these, the percentages don't work with println. So we have to write print f here. And now it'll work perfectly. What I wanted to show you here was uh, that even when you declare a variable like i, f, and b, Golang automatically puts empty values in those variables. It does not keep them undefined. So uh, with JavaScript, when you work with JavaScript, you get a lot of this error that the, the variable is undefined, right? And it's very uh, annoying and it, it can be difficult to solve if, uh, especially if the function is quite big. 
but uh, in case of golang it always puts uh, an empty value so for integer the empty value is zero for a float type of a variable the empty value is again zero for a boolean variable the empty value is false and for a string variable the empty value is an empty string so which is a nice feature of uh, golang just wanted to show this to you so that you're aware that whenever you declare some value it automatically has an empty value inside so thank you for watching and do subscribe to this channel